back again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite podcast. up y'all and we back and we back and we back it's birthday week i'm ready to tell you about my i took a trip to san diego with rachel i did a show low-key outside matt rife paul leah ian edwards um so i'm gonna tell you about the trip to san diego uh by having my birthday uh why i shaved um what else uh just some stuff that's going on out there some movie reviews uh but anyways Yes. All right. And we're back. And we're back. Griffin with Griffin. Solo. Solo. There's going to be some bitching with Griffin. We're going to open up with some bitching with Griffin. That's what I say. You know, because I went to San Diego. It was my birthday. Uh, Matt Reif asked me to do, you know, his show. They got, It's called Low Key Outside. They do a bunch of shows around L.A. and they're trying to expand other places. Anyway, so he asked me to do the show. And I thought, oh, you know what? It's my birthday. So this is actually kind of a cool thing. So I'm going to take Rachel. You know, we'll stay in a hotel, spend a couple of days. The 12th is my birthday. 13th was the show. Then we came home, you know, on the 14th. So it's like, you know, yeah, let's have a little a fun time. So Rachel likes staying at the beach. Okay. She likes staying at the beach. So I got, I booked, I went online, found a little like I, where the venue was, and I said hotels hotels nearby, and it was uh, Pacific Beach in San Diego. So I was like, all right, let me pick, you know, a hotel. I found one. It was reasonably priced. They were thirty percent off. You know, it seemed like it was nice. The pictures they got me, I got got because on the website it looks good. You know what I mean? The room was well lit. It, it looked boutiquey. Okay, so. We get, we pull up immediately. I didn't realize Pacific Beach is like the Venice Beach of San Diego. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's like Venice Beach is a weird spot. It's just hobo central. It's just a lot of weird, a lot of young people, a lot of like the, you know, unsavory types. That's the, that's that beach, but not to the scale of it as Venice Beach is, but Pacific Beach is sort of, you know, and I can tell even by the, the, the how the hotels look and, and the surrounding areas, this is, you know, you know, and then one of the selling points, I'm not even going to say the name of the hotel, but one of the selling points was like, oh, we, you know, we're uh, a walk away from the best tacos in San Diego. You know what I mean? Like that should have been a key for me to be like, oh, that's your selling point about the hotel is some walking distance taco truck. Like what? Anyways, so you pull up, there's no parking. Like, they, they only have a certain number of spots, and it's coned off. All right. So, you know, I'm already like, hold on. So when I go inside, I go, yo, man, I, I'm not paying this amount of money to have to park my car a, a mile away from the hotel. It was already, like, just a little small lobby, one dude working at a computer. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, it's, this ain't a good start. He was like, no, no, don't worry. I reserved you a spot. This is your spot right here. It was right in front of the thing. You use a cone, right? There's a cone, you have to move, whatever. And, 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 and so I was already like, okay, well, we got a spot, $32 a night for the spot. All right. So that's going to be an extra $64 on top of the $200, whatever dollars it was. And that was supposedly a discount. Okay. So the, um, you know, so all right, I tell Rachel she moves the car. I'm still a little bit like, I don't like where the car is parked because the car is parked like the beach is like right there, the walkway. You know, it's like it just it don't look safe. And then the guy says, oh, well, the, the hotel closes at 10. You know, we, we his office closes at 10. So now you're just on your own. And on top of that, another red flag for me is when when the hotel, the door to your room is outside. I'm out. You hear me? I'm out. OK, I'm just I'm bougie that way. I don't want. The ho- okay, so then it's like a little. I, I, so I go up to the. I go up, and then you have to go this way, that way in the stairs. Everything's kind of outside, and then I see like a, a one of the rooms is just open, and some people just looking out at us, like they just looking. Hey, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, these are the people that are gonna steal all our shit. Anyway, get into the room, 
Now I'm looking at the room and I'm like, hold up. So let's say, like, the room was a little ass room, okay? There was like one window in the room, okay? This little ass window, and then you have the door, all right? Like a little bow. It was upstairs, you know? So, like, we're facing this way, and the beach is like this. So the beach is over here, all right? So the, the door and the window is facing this way, and the beach is to the right. So if I'm facing the door, the beach is to the right, and there's a window. That's the only window in the damn thing. I look on my reservation. I ask for ocean view. I say, ocean view, right? I want an ocean. That's the whole reason why we come here. It's so ocean view. By the way, it was cold, so it wasn't even going to be like it was enjoyable. I go down and go, hey, man. Look on my reservation. Ocean view. Oh, oh, it's ocean view, man. It's a window, you know? I go back into the room. It's a little ass window, like I'm on a on a cruise ship. To see the beach, you couldn't stand in front of the window and look out like this. You had to stand to like the right of the window in the corner near the like to the side of the bed to see out the window and you could sort of see the beach. That was the ocean view. Rachel comes in, and I know she ain't going to like it. You know, we're kind of looking at each other, and, and, and it's like, you know, the toilet was too low to the ground. The bed was creaky. It's my birthday. You know, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I I don't want some creaky-ass bed that everybody know what we're doing because I'm about, you know, I'm having some, it's, it's birthday time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going hard on my birthday, right? So I go down and talk to the guy. No, I, I you know, Rachel also... She went up to the room, and I went down to like talk to him about the ocean view. Rachel hits me with a text talking about, she goes, disgusting, the bed is wet. Like, there was the bed was damp. I'm out. I go down to the guy, and I go, hey, man, um, it's my birthday, so I can't do this. So can you, like, refund me? And it, to the guy's credit, he was cool. He gave me all the money back, and we bounced. I went on my app because I travel all the time, so I'm on. I got all these rewards programs. Went on a Marriott, got a room like this. It was way cheaper, way nicer. We went to a nice restaurant right next to the um, hotel, Larson's. Shout out to them, Larson's San Diego. You know, they, they had the balcony, the the outdoor patio open, but it was still covered. So it was like really, you know, you like they, they it was a normal spot that they normally have even when when the world was normal. So, you know, we went eight. Had, and so it was just but I just hate I got got, you know, you look on somebody's website, right? The, the website of the hotel and the way they got it set up, you would have thought this was like. A uh, four star, like you know, really nice little, like I say, little boutique hotel right on the beach. They got amenities and all this kind of stuff. Man, this was just a days in, you know, on the beach. Like you get that term beach, you hear beach, and then you think, oh, it's on the beach. So that means this is gonna be great. No, nah, man. Beach just fools you into thinking that you're gonna settle for all that other stuff, and and this was like a young person's thing. You could tell, I could tell that young people, this is their kind of room. They go, oh, this is great. We're right on the beach, and we can walk up and down. We can do all this stuff. Not me. I'm too old for that now. I'm a creature of comfort. All right, I'm a creature of comfort. So this trip didn't start off good, but but like I say, we got to the hotel and everything was working out, so it was great. And by the way, thanks for being here, Griffin with Griffin, and make sure you. Um, if you uh, subscribe, you know, do all that stuff. And, you know, watch me game on Air Griffin Gaming on Twitch, which I do every single day. All right. So before I left for the birthday adventure, you know, I got I'm clean shaven. Well, I'm not necessarily clean shaven now because it was like three days, but I'm sort of clean shaven. And the reason is, is because I got a, I had a great I had a big audition. Had this great audition. I felt I just feel like I'm back in the business. I ain't gonna really talk about it much because I don't know what's gonna happen. Actually, today, Monday, when this comes out, I'm probably gonna get the word if I actually booked this or not. So the next time you hear from me, I'm either gonna be super happy or I'm gonna be like, ah oh, man, I was disappointed, but you move on to the next. It's just how it works. But I just been the reason why 
you know, and so they wanted me to be clean shaved. They said, you know, can he clean shave so we can just see what that looks like? And I was like, fine. So we'll find out. It's a great role. It's a great part. You know, so I'm not going to talk much about that. But the, the reason I'm even thinking about this is like, you know, this is the anniversary of the world going crazy. You know, March 12th, last year, 2020, I was in Tennessee at uh, at the Chattanooga Choo Choo uh, at the Comedy Catch in Tennessee, and it was already, like, in the air. People were talking about, like, we don't know what's going to happen and what's going on. It was, like, really leery. The NBA just canceled a game on March 11th, and then it was, like, I'm flying out for my birthday to do the shows. It was, like, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know? So once we heard the, the NBA shut down the, the thing, it was, like, well, people are still going out and doing their shows, and then... You know, it was like March 12th, everybody's canceling shows, it's time to go. This particular club didn't, so I finished the weekend, and then I went home, and then I was home for a year, basically, almost a year, you know? So it's just the anniversary of that, and like, look where we are, man. You know, look look where we are now. Like, today, driving back home from San Diego, well, when I, the day that I filmed this, which is, what's well, Sunday, you know, I, I, do, I do it on Sunday, um... You know, we stopped at a restaurant and we sat inside uh, because they say, you know, t- t- Monday, March 15th, their restaurants are open again at a certain capacity. So if I feel like we're doing OK. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if we're doing OK or not. I-, I still honestly don't understand the numbers. I don't know what's going on. People think they understand what's going on. A lot of people like how people talk about COVID. It really annoys me. You know, it's like most of you are ignorant. You, you like most of you. Most of you that hit the not 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 all of you. I'm saying the ones that hit me up with their attitude, the way they hit me up, I know that they actually don't have real solid information. They're not scientists, they're not doctors. It's just people that they they read some headline or they read something and they think they know what they're talking about. I freely admit I don't know anything. I don't know about this. I'm just giving you my two cents about what I think based off the things that you do know, right? But I'm not attacking anybody about it the way they attack me. But look, man, look at like all these things that are coming out now. We've been dealing with this for a year, you know, a year. Right. So I saw this thing where it was like 85 percent of the people that have died, 85 percent in the United States are over the age of 65. That shit was mind blowing to me, mind blowing, because it says to me that we didn't handle any of this right. We don't take care of the elderly in our country. We weren't looking after the people 65 and over. All this stuff about shutting everything down and the way we did it, it did nothing if those are the majority of people that died. We should have been taking care of those people more. Some of you don't care because, you know, if you're young, you're in your early 20s, late 20s, your parents might be 40s, 50s. So even for you, it don't mean nothing. But for my generation, where our parents are 70s, 80s, 90s, that's a big deal, man. And it's just a shame to me that, like, when you see a stat like that, you know, they they now know more. So they're coming out like, you know, so the elderly, 65 and up, killed off. People with pre-existing conditions and obesity is a big one. And, of course, nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about it. I was on top of that shit immediately because I was like, whoa, I got to take care of myself for two reasons. One, my mom has dementia and I need to think about, is that hereditary? You know, is it is it genetic? Is it, am I pre, pre-exposed to getting that? Or what can I do to stop that? And it's just being healthier. So I had to lose weight, work on my inflammation, work on B12, vitamin D and all these things. And I have been really trying to take care of myself. I'm down 40 pounds in body fat, especially in, 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 in this area alone. You know what I mean? So I, I I was like, to me, I was like, okay, being healthier, you probably will be able to overcome this thing. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know what to say. So, so now we're at this point now where we'll never know because now so many people that were going to die or could die from it have died. Now the rest of the people that are left are now taking the vaccine. So now we got the people who are most uh, susceptible to getting sick are now vaccinated for the most part. Um, And then so now we're here. So we don't even know. 
You know, we, you know, we're going to look back and be like, well, why did we shut down the way we did? And I'm not saying we shouldn't have shut down. I'm not saying we shouldn't be taking precautions. I'm not saying that just because if you're young, then we, we just go willy nilly. No, I think that all the things that we did in terms of wearing masks and social distancing and, and, and capping the capacity of places and all that stuff, that that's the kind of stuff we could have done. But I do not think that we the, the, after three or four months being into it, that we should have ruined everyone's lives the way we did ruined financially ruined people's lives. I think it should have been handled a lot better and we dropped the ball and we'll never know because now they're just going to be like, oh, we're opening up. Texas is like, yeah, we're opening up 100 percent. No restrictions. And then other states are going to do that. And now we're going to sit here and be like, well, is did we do this right? Did we handle this situation correctly? I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. And again, I'm not saying that, you know. We, all I'm saying is the way we did it, to me, looks as if it was not done the right way. And if some professional wants to come out and say to me, like, well, this is the best thing we could have done, then okay, fine. But I don't think so. You know what I mean? Until I get some solid information, to me, it just looks like, you know, we just weren't together as a nation. We weren't the leadership. You know, they, they weren't planning this out properly. They weren't being like, hey, let's look after the elderly and how, like, what do we have to do to make sure the people that are most susceptible to this are going to be safe? And we just didn't do it. Because look how, look at all the people that died. It's crazy. Anyways, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, it's just, it just made me think about it like it's like a year and where are we now? Because that's really what I'm trying to think about. It's like, where are we now? Look at all the stuff that has happened in a year. You know, like the comedy store, like all the different employees who are now gone, all the different comics who are gone away, all the things with allegations with Brian and Chris and, you know, it's like all that. So, you know, they're not going to be back there. And it's like Rogan's gone. And like it's like all of these things that happened in 2020 was just like terrible, you know. So here we are, you know, a year later and it's like, where are we, you know? I mean, for me, how am I, have I been affected? Yes. I mean, one, I feel like I'm trying to get healthier. I'm in a great relationship that was strengthened by the time we spent together. Um, I'm engaged. Uh, I moved to a better place and just make I just feel like I, I'm trying to improve my life and make my life happier and share it with someone who I care deeply for. So I try I feel like as I look back on it, I made the best of the situation because I had the means to do that. But not everybody's in that situation and I feel for you. But I'm just talking about for me, how I tried to like see the silver lining in all of this. I mean, we all should do that. I think you should all look at your lives and be like, am I better? How am I? Am I better or worse? And there are some people who obviously just financially, there's nothing you could do. But is there any silver lining? I mean, because for me, I'm just looking at my life differently now. Like before, I was just all about comedy all the time. You know, I'm getting my notebook and I'm going to the Laugh Factory, the comedy store, and I got to go every night. I'm taking on as many shows as I can. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I want to stay relevant. I want to stay there. I want to make sure that, you know, I'm running this rat race. And I feel like now that I wouldn't do it the same. Easy to say now because nothing's going on, but I really feel like I have a much more appreciation for being at home, being with my lady, and enjoying that. Enjoying my place, you know, sitting down and watching some shows that I like to watch. You know what I mean? Watching movies that I like to watch. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, and just like having dinner with her, or just laying in bed with her, and just you know, like, you know, and then realizing, like, how can I monetize my life in other ways, you know, and that's why I did, like, when I started doing the gaming, Air Griffin Gaming on Twitch and YouTube, you know, I thought, oh, here's other ways I could do it, and so then, like, I just was struggling with who am I as a person, who am I as, a, am I still a comic, am I still an entertainer, <laughs> like, what is my life, and then, like, cut to now, you know, I started to get auditions again. So I went on some few auditions and then I got this really great audition and I've gone through all the steps and process where I'm like right at the, like I'm right there. It's like me and a couple of people and it'll be like one of those life changing jobs. And so, you know, put out your energy that I uh, actually, you know, I book it. But even if I don't, um, I, I, I know I, I gave it my best and I feel thrilled that I'm like a part of the, the game still. You know, even after everything that happened, I'm still a part of it. And it makes me feel good for the future, regardless of what happens. So it's just, uh, you know, 
interesting, interesting year, you know, and I think we should really look back on the year and just, we know the bad stuff, you know what I mean? And, and, and I, my condolences go out to everyone that lost someone close to them. Um, but even in that, take some time to, Hey, what did I learn about myself? And is my, is my life, where is my life now? And could it, you know, what can I do to make it better? You know? So that's what I say about that. But, um, yeah. So I had this show in San Diego and it was great, you know, low key outside, shout out to them. Um, and it was fun. You know, I've been doing a lot of jokes actually about Rachel, (laughs) you know, like through the pandemic and, and this was the first time in a year that she's with me at a show and watching me do the jokes. And so I just love seeing her face because she's like, oh, my God, it's so romantic that you're doing jokes about me. But it's like I love doing the jokes because then I look out at the crowd and I see other couples and they're like, oh, the guys are like, that's you. And the girls are like, oh, my God, I totally relate. So that was fun. That process was fun. And then like just hanging out in San Diego, um, you know, with the other comics was great. So like I say, hopefully... Hopefully, you know, they're talking about by July that the world, we're just going to be back to normal, you know? And, and I'm sure back to normal with these other things like, this, you know, people hopefully will still wear masks and, you know, be socially distant and, you know, being healthier and taking care of themselves. But, you know, you look at some of these numbers, man, they're talking about how teen suicide is up, alcoholism is up, uh, drug use is up, um, domestic violence is up. It's like all these things that have been affected by this choice we made to shut down in the way that we did. And how we kept it going with without really any leadership, without any like guidance, without any like plan, it felt like, you know. So hopefully we can like on the road and heal the nation, you know, as best we can. So I look forward to that. But in the meantime, I feel like this is the whole bitching with Griffin uh, episode. But so they had this. I want to talk about some stuff. So the, one of the things I want to talk about is that 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 basketball player from the Miami Heat. He streams. He plays Call of Duty. He has a Twitch channel. I don't think he has a Twitch channel anymore, but uh, his name is Myers Leonard, I believe is his name. Um, Myers Leonard uh, plays for the Miami Heat. So he was apparently playing Call of Duty, and I know how it is. Like, you playing Call of Duty, they, man, something about Warzone, Call of Duty, man. You have your highest highs, your lowest lows of emotions, and it just, you have this, the, just extreme anger and extreme happiness in that game. So he flies off the handle, something happens, and he uses a racial slur in the process. And he uses the an anti-Semitic racial slur. So and he had this whole thing about like, oh, I didn't know what it meant and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, man. I don't know this dude. I ain't going to speak for him. All right. But I will say this. I know how it is to be that angry when you're playing Call of Duty and you say things. And I'm not excusing what he said at all. I'm saying you say things. But you say things that you know. Like, whatever that thing is that you normally say. Now, here's what I'll say. There's a lot of racial slurs and things that, like, are they retired or not? Are they close? Like, the N-word, for instance, not retired, will never be retired. People want it to be retired, but it won't be. It's hard to retire a word that has been reappropriated by black people I use it, you know, I have my friends, you know, it's like, it's been taken back, but because of that, it makes other people feel like, well, if you're saying it, I'll say it. And so there's always this up and down about it. There's always this like, you know, there's this sort of, oh shit, my chair just went down. Did you guys see that? (laughs) This chair is broken. But anyways, there's always like a, there's always like a feeling about it. There's always like, so it's one of those things that's like, it's still present. It's in rap music. It's in movies. It's, it's you know, there's it's, that's a word that is still around. Whether it should be or not, I don't know. I, I, you, know you know what I mean? I don't actually, if I'm just being honest, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, you talk to some people who will be like, this is a terrible word. It has a terrible history. We sh- it should be removed. Then there's other people who are like, you know, listen, we've we, we've taken the power away from it and it's just a word and you know you shouldn't let it be so important you know you have both sides of that argument you have other people who are like no nah, only black people should say it no one else should say it but that makes people like if anybody can say it 
If one person can say it, that means anybody can say it. That's how people feel. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's how people feel. It's like I was, I directed my buddies, I directed a buddy of mine, Vinny O'Shauna. He has this, uh, uh, pot, he he wrote a sketch. He wrote, a, you know, a, a, a sketch that he wants to pitch. And anyways, I, I said, hey, let me direct it. So I directed it. But one of the lines is a black actor is saying the N-word in a, in a context of the sentence, you know. So, you know, as we're sitting around ready to go and then one of the writers who's a white guy, you know, he just says it. He's like, oh, are we going to do the line such and such N-word, you know? And he said it a couple times. And so I had to cut in and say, hey, 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 there's actually no reason for anybody but the actor who's going to say this to say this moving forward. There's no need to say that out loud anymore. So let's not say that out loud anymore, you know, because it's just there's no there's no justification for it. You know, let's not make a justification for it. Let's just move on from it. That's just how I felt at the time, you know. So, but anyways, the reason why I'm bringing this up in terms of for Miles Leonard, Myers Leonard, whatever the fuck his name is, is, okay, so you have the N-word. It's still around. Okay. The other word I feel like is like closer to retirement, like really, you know, being shamed is, you know, the homosexual, when you use the F-word, let's say, you know. Rhymes with maggot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like that's one of those that like people were saying it and they were trying to justify by like, oh, I don't really mean that. I, you know, uh, it, it was like, you know, like like retarded is one of those words that wasn't a bad word, but was turned into a bad word, even though that's a word. That's an English language word when something is retarded. Uh, you don't necessarily mean like somebody's dumb or stupid. It just, you know, it, it, there's an actual term for it, you know, but that was taken and used in a derogatory way. So now that was like, oh, we got to get rid of that one. Midget, another one that, you know, you can't say that, you, you know, you can't say it in a context, you know, but I'm saying it out loud because it's like, that's a word. That's not, and how people used it, they turned it into a derogatory term. But the F word, the N word, uh, but the, the F word, I feel like is, is like in retirement. Because there's no, there's no like gay rappers who are like we reappropriated this and you know no it's just one of those words where you go hey we don't want to say this anymore we're moving on okay now that being said that's how I feel about the anti-Semitic uh, the K you know K word or I don't even know how is it gonna start with a K yeah but that's he used my thing is this that's been retired like there's if you're saying that, you, it just comes across like you know exactly what it means. If you're still saying that, it's so harsh because it's been taken away for so long. I don't, my girlfriend's Jewish. My fiance is Jewish. You know, I have Jewish friends. I, I, I don't, that's not even the one that even comes to mind to me with my comic friends, even if we're just joking around. You know, because when comics joke around, they say some really terrible shit to each other. Sometimes it's it's not for it's not for you. You know, it's not for you to even understand. I actually don't care what you think about it. You know, me, uh, my friends and I, when we say things, that's that's like locker room talk, you know. But when the locker room talk gets out or somebody hears you saying the locker room talk at that point, you have to step in and be like, hey, I'm sorry that you heard that. I'm sorry. You know, you know whatever. And that's what sucks when that kind of stuff gets out, because now you put in this position. But anyways. That's one of those words I've never said to anyone, you know, even when I'm making fun of my Jewish friends who might even use the N word in jest in private, you know what I mean? Like, but that particular word, so I don't understand. So you, so it, it lends itself to for you to think like, damn, dude, do you just not like, do you really not like Jewish people or like, are you really anti-Semitic in a little bit? Or are you just, there's some kind of, were you raised this way? Or like, you know, do, do your parents, because we get that shit from our parents. When our parents, like, you know, our parents are the ones that, that ingrain racism towards certain people because of their experience. You know, that that's why racism is generational. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if your grandfather was racist, you know, you know, maybe your father was trying not to be racist, but he learned some racism from your father. And so now, hey, maybe you got a little bit, but you're trying to fight it. And we have to weed it out generation over generation over generation. You can look at sports as a way of seeing how it goes away. It's like when basketball was all white and then they had black players and then now basketball is mostly black. And then you have, you know, the white coaches. And now there's 
black coaches. Now you have black GMs. And now, you know, now we have one black owner. And so it's like generation. It takes a long time to weed out that those feelings. And I think, you know, it's the same thing with racism. But so I don't know, man. I just I feel for the guy. I, you know, I, I genuinely feel like he realized he made a mistake for a lot of reasons. Even if he even if he realized, like, oh, man, this is a this is a culture of cancel. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is the cancel culture, oversensitive, overreacting society that we live in right now that the mob, like, doesn't want to actually communicate and deal with things and use shame as a way of being like, hey, you know, let's let, let's do better. No, no, they just want to, like, remove people. They want to erase people. You know, they want to erase them and remove them from society. That's how this culture and, and society wants is, is, is so dangerous. It's, it's actually really terrible. So I like that a few people have reached out to the guy like Julian Edelman, Edelman the football player from the, the ex-football player from the Patriots. I'm not sure if he's still there or not. But anyways, I don't know. I'm sure where he plays, but he wrote this really nice op-ed piece, like a little like a like a letter to Miles Leonard saying like, hey, man. You know, reach out to me and I'll, I'll tell you why this is hateful. I'll tell you why it's hurtful to say it and how, like, you know, even when you think you don't understand what it means and saying it, even that could be dangerous because it just, you know, it, 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 it was really nicely done. And that's the way you should, it should be dealt with, you know. But this guy, you know, he's got the $50,000 fine. He was away from the team for a week. Now he's on the trade block. It's like a lot of, like, stuff going on with this guy that, you know, and he made him he made a mistake. You know, the dude made a mistake. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't condone that, you know, because I play with people on my even on my stream. You know, one of my friends that plays with me, he, you know, he said some things a couple times that I had to say to him. Hey, man, you know what? You got to be careful what you say. Like, let's tone down on certain racial slurs and things like that. You just, you know, not even tone down. Like, don't say them. Because, you know, you're going to get me thrown off Twitch, you know, even though I know you don't, I understand, it's like I understand and you should also understand why we shouldn't say these things. So, you know what I mean? It's it's tough. You know, it's tough. So it's like you have these certain words that people that we, you know, we want to retire from society, but, you know, I I don't know. I, I I don't know where I stand on it. Sometimes I feel like, why do we give words like this so much power when it really has to do with like the intent behind it? Like, you know, it's like, do you think taking away a word is going to take away someone's hate in their heart? You know, they just that's how that's how you make a word like retarded negative because this is the word we've taken and now we're going to make it negative. <laughs> you know, so if you take away the K word or the N word and then they'll say, well, we're going to say this instead because it's the intent behind it. Right. That's how I feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it. You can tell me in the comments, you know, because I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people who are going to be like, you know, you need to understand what these words mean and where it comes from and why it's hateful. And it's like, I get you like I'm not I'm on your side. OK, so don't don't come at me like you think you understand what I'm saying or how I feel. You know, I get I'm on your side. I get why uh, words have power, and they do. Words have power. Um, it's just how we handle and how we deal with people when these kind of things happen is my issue, you know? So hopefully hopefully the guy learned a lesson, you know, and hopefully this is like a way for other people to learn from his mistake and be like, yo, like, you know, people in entertainment and streamers and people that be like, Ooh, let me watch what I say because words have power and it, it could hurt people's feelings. Whether you feel like the word is, you know, you're you're right to say whatever you want or freedom of speech and all that kind of nonsense. The point is, you're an entertainer. You're doing you, it's for entertainment, and you want to make sure that you're not making people feel bad. You know, it's it's tough, and that's that's and that's weird coming from a stand up comedian, right? Because it's hard to be. That's the line we have to like the line we cross and I've, I've talked about this before but you know it's just basically there's always going to be a butt of the joke and sometimes the butt gets slapped you know sometimes it's a hard slap of the butt sometimes you know sometimes it's like oh okay people are like oh i like that or they oh i don't like that so but it's all about the intent like i don't have ill intent with my jokes but i am going to talk about everyone Everyone's going to get it. White, black, whoever, gay, straight, transgender, 
conservative, liberal. I like to go at everyone the same. And I feel like when we're talking about comedy, don't assume ill intent up top. And maybe we'll, you'll be able to just be like, oh, okay. I've talked about this on other podcasts. It's like Taylor Swift, man. You know, she's watching Jeannie and George, you know, which my girl, Brianna Howard, Howie is the star. She was on Down Up Here. She's been on my podcast. She's a good friend. She's a star of that show. It's a great show. It's funny. It's dark. They make a joke about Taylor Swift. You know, they say, oh, you go through more men than Taylor Swift. So I'm sure Taylor Swift was at home watching this. And then she got mad. And then she went to Twitter and stuck the mob on everybody. Stuck the mob on them. You know, I thought it was irresponsible. I thought it was irresponsible and dangerous. Like, you are such a big celebrity. You have 100 million followers for you to attack this these people. It's like, you know, you know how, how toxic it, it would get. You know how dangerous it would get. You know what I mean? And by the way, I thought hater, haters were going to hate. I thought haters were going to hate. So maybe shake that shit off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shake it off, maybe? I don't know. Shake it off, Taylor? Should we just, you know what I'm saying? Shake it off. Shake it. Because haters go, hey, hey, hey. Remember all that? Okay. And these aren't even really haters. It's actually a compliment to you. Because you're so big. You know what I mean? It's um, when people make fun of you like that on such a scale in a show like that, it's really like a, hey, we like you. So we're making you a part of the comedy. But shake it off, girl. Shake it off. Right? Maybe? All right. What's up, y'all? I'm here to talk to you about BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp. Are you depressed? You know, the, you know, the world's been crazy for a year right now, and it has a long-lasting effect. You know, suicide's up, drinking's up, and all these things. And if you need some help, and you need some help from a licensed professional that's what I want you to go to right now is betterhelp.com. That's H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com. Slash Griffin, you get 20% off. Betterhelp.com. Look, join millions of people who have taken charge of their mental health. You know, you're not you're gonna have to go to some crazy waiting room and you know just feel uncomfortable. It's from the privacy of your own home. You know, you set up an appointment, you will be contacted within 48 hours, and they have, like I said, this isn't self-help, this is therapy. This is a therapist who's gonna help you organize your thoughts, figure out where the pain is coming from, because they they can recognize patterns and they will help you. It's not gonna solve your problem, but it's gonna help you maybe understand. So I really appreciate having this sponsor, BetterHelp.com. So make sure you check that out. Go to BetterHelp.com slash Griffin for a 10% off. And, you know, take charge of your mental health and start feeling better today. Let's get back to the show. So I was it's funny. I was going to talk about, let me do a movie review now. Um. I was going to talk about this, and then I saw Rogan talk about it. So, you know, when Rogan talks about it, it means, like, not no one else can talk about it. <laughs> uh, but I do want to talk about it. Um, it's called I Care A Lot. I saw it on Netflix. Spoiler alert, okay? Spoiler. If you want to watch this movie, skip ahead, okay, to the next movie I talk about, which will be Bliss on Amazon. But... So it stars Rosamund Pike, who's great. Like, she's such a phenomenal actress. But spoiler alert. So the movie's about, she's a con artist, you know? She, uh, her con is a caretaker for elderly people. And she ends up, you know, robbing the elderly people, puts them in a home, takes all their money, sells all their property for money. And while the, and then she, and so the doctor's in on it, the elderly home is in on it. And so, You know, this is how the movie opens up. You see her. She's just a snake. Movie opens up with a guy who's like, he can't see his mom. And this, you know, you know what I mean? They go to court. And he's like cursing at her outside the courtroom. And you really see how she's a monster. Like, there isn't one redeemable person in this movie. Like, everybody's terrible. Okay? And this is what I liked about it because it made me feel something the whole movie. 
because the whole movie, you know, you, you know, it's like, especially in this day and age of like where it's like Me Too and feminism and like, you know, female power and female empowerment, right? So you had this movie where the female lead, you know, so you, so like, do you want her to win? That's the thing when you watch movies now. It's like, all right, all right, here's the female character. Is she is she the star? Is she the hero? Do you want her to win? Well, this bitch ain't a hero. She's terrible. She's literally ter- she's a like a really awful person, right? And you feel that she's an awful person the whole movie. And then in comes Peter Dinklage. Okay, so anyway, she, you know, the the, the star, she um ends up, you know, finding an, an elderly woman who they who you think doesn't have a family, you know, and so she's easy pickings, and the woman's rich, so that you know, so the doctor, the the shady doctor signs, a, you know, saying that this woman has mental issues, and so we need this caretaker to come in and take care of her. So they come and they get her. It's really sad, you know what I mean? Because the whole time I'm thinking about my parents, I'm thinking about my mom. Because somebody do this to my mom, you know what I mean? So they come and they get her, they take her, they you know they take her to a thing, and so then later they've all, they've sold all her stuff. They're painting her house because this woman's put away in a thing. They won't let her t- call anyone, right? And so then a guy comes to the house looking for her. He's like, "Yeah, I'm here to pick up Mrs. So and So," and then he, so she's not there. The house has moved. So he goes to Peter Dinklage, who plays this like Russian mobster. He's like an ex. He faked his own death or something, and now he's like living in exile. But he's like a this like. Peter Dinklage is a he's a badass man, just a phenomenal actor, and I believe him. You know, even though it's like wow, you're like a hundred seventeen pound little dude, like you're not, you know, you're not like in real life, you're not really intimidating, probably, right? You know, I mean, I shouldn't even say that, but come on, like I'm six three, I don't care if you if you less than five foot and weigh a hundred pounds, I'm beating your ass, okay? <laughs> Let's just be real. But, you know, in a movie, he just he's so believable. So he plays this bad guy. And this is actually his mother who has been taken away. So now you have this battle of will between Peter Dinklage and her. And I won't tell you everything that happens. I'll try not to spoil everything. But, you know, it is what it is. Spoiler alert. You know, so they have this battle. And that's what the battle becomes between like him wanting to get his mom and her just wanting to win, wanting to have money and power and influence. And that's why she's doing all this, you know? So the whole movie goes on and you're just like, I'm like, God, everybody's awful. And then, okay, this is the major spoiler part right now. So if you have thought you've stayed stuck around, you know what I mean? This is the part you might want to move forward to because you think she wins. And I'm watching this movie, man. And at the end, and I'm thinking, to, I'm really shaking my head. I'm like, I can't believe they're doing this. You know, I'm like, I can't believe that. And I, and I was going in my head about like, oh, I, oh, so, the, you know, because it's a female lead, oh, she's got to, you know, win. And, you know, I was just going into this hole in my stupid head about, you know, and then, bow, something happens. And you're like, and I thought, oh, it, it, it fixed it for me. I was like, whew, thank you. <laughs> and then it made the whole movie better. It made like it just like the 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 emotional relief I felt at the end. It was just like, ah, you know what I mean. I was like, whoa, that was dope. <laughs> so it's a great movie. I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. It's, it's called I Care a Lot. It's like a psychological crime drama thriller. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Now the next movie I want to review is I saw on Amazon, it's called Bliss, and it's with Selma Hayek and Owen Wilson. Um, and these two are so good in this movie. Um, I have mixed reviews about the movie, but they were really good. Like, she had some really great, like, just grounded, real moments in this movie that I just really enjoyed, you know? Um, but anyway, this movie is about, wait, let me, let me, let me, I want to just get the the right thing. Bliss. Bliss film. Yeah. Cause I want to read what they say it's about. A unfulfilled man and a mysterious woman believe they are living in a simulated reality, but when their newfound bliss world begins to bleed into the ugly world, they must decide what's real and where the, the where they truly belong. Now, that's even a different description than the description that I heard before, you know? 
But Selma Hack and Owen Wilson were really good in the movie. So, again, it's sort of like an Inception Matrix type thing. You know, you know where you know, all, you know, a movie opens and Owen Wilson's just sort of like sort of like weird character who like gets fired you know and he he like accidentally kills his boss sort of thing or you think that's what happens then he meets this some high character who has seemingly has like sort of magic powers she's like controlling matter and you know making people move and you know and so she's trying to say to him that this isn't real like she's like you're real but nothing else is real and so you're kind of going along with the movie like oh okay and then there's even a moment where you f- they, something happens where they're taken out of this simulation. You think, but but then I don't know if if they really were. Was it like a simulation upon a simulation? Are they crazy? And this is my bad. My critique of the movie is that I don't like when you don't explain things. I don't like when like later you have to talk to somebody and be like, well, what was that about? And they're like, oh well, this you know. Well, this was actually, you know, an analogy or, you know, a satire to what, you know, I don't like all that shit, that artsy fartsy stuff. You know, it's like, were they in a simulation or not? And to me, they did not explain it enough. If you watch the movie, you'll see what I'm talking about. It drags a little bit. It's a little melodramatic. But I do think that their relationship, their performance in the relationship was actually really great and worth watching. So, you know, check that out, um, Bliss, on Amazon. But it really was just, I didn't know at the end was like, you know, was it like, were they in the Matrix or not? You know, you don't really, you know, like one of them's supposed to escape. They never show it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know, is it whether this guy's just like a drug addict on the streets who's like troubled and his family's trying to help him out because there's a family element. I mean, I'm being vague about it because I don't want to like ruin it too much. But like, I would like for people to watch this movie and then hit me up in the comments on Instagram just to be like, yo, maybe you get it. Maybe you'll be like, oh, no, this was great. And the movie was this, 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 and this. You know, that would be great. If that's the case, well, man, cue me in. But if not, I don't know, man. Just <laughs> I just I just do not know. That shit was bizarre movie. So Bliss on Amazon. Check that out. Last one, though, is, uh, you know, uh, the WandaVision ended, and I really loved it. I loved how they wrapped up WandaVision. I love that it was this whole, this like, you know, eight episodes or whatever, how many episodes of like, you know, really delving into like Wanda's, you know, origin story. And then you just see the end. And then, you know, so then it's like, a, you know, the real magic. And, and then she became the Scarlet Witch. And, you know, that's like all in the Marvel lore and, and all that stuff. And so I thought that they really wrapped that up good. And there's all these little Easter eggs uh, that, you know, hopefully they like, keep, I hope they keep doing this. Like like when Netflix was doing the uh the other, you know, whatever that other one was with like Iron Fist and and uh you know those it was good, but it wasn't the MCU. So it was made like a tele like a law and order television. It was made like a television show and some of it was like real cheesy and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um you know, with Luke Luke Cage daredevil daredevil i thought was the best one and the punisher like the way they made it it was grimy and but it didn't feel like it was a part of the mcu so even though there were parts of wandavision that were very cheesy and corny it like it, it, but i felt like oh well this is tv but there's still a part of it that it's like makes me feel like oh this is still part of that avengers universe and we're learning more about it and it, it doesn't have to go away so i like that this series has that. And I hope that the other series, the Falcon and the soldier and, and all the other series, I hope they're all like the universes are connected in, in this way. And then, you know, we can keep the stories going. So I really did, you know, enjoy that. Let me see where I'm at. All right. Where am I at here, guys? Like 49 minutes. I think that's good. I think we're good. Um. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you for, 
you know, listening every week. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure all this out. I'm a, I actually am talking to a couple of people about being, you know, coming to be my intern and really helping me with all this. So much response from to my fighter and the kid about website help. So so many people are hitting me up. So I'm narrowing that down. So we're going to get a new website, and I'm going to have somebody come in and help me so we can make more clips, and I can make more content. I can do stuff, more stuff with my Patreon. I could just do more stuff, more content to put out there for you and the people that are fans, and I really appreciate those fans. So, And again, watch me. I, I play, I, I'm on every day on Twitch doing Call of Duty and Avengers and FIFA, and I'm going to start playing 2K because I, I have the, the Game Pass, and it's free. So I'm going to play that for as long as it's free, so I'm going to check that out too. So. But listen, you know, riffing with Griffin, man, we're starting a new era right now, 2021, the world's coming back. So, you know, I'm I'm, I'm booking stuff for the road. I'm, I'm going to get out there again. So I might be coming to a city near you. So once my new website gets going, you'll see my dates and stuff like that on there. So make sure you guys look out for that. And, you know, hey, and wish me luck. You know, when you watch this, if you're listening to it in the morning, keep your fingers crossed, send out some good vibes for me that I booked this job. You know, but if I don't, it is what it is, but I love the thrill of being like in the mix. And so it's like, you know, if, if I had to give you guys advice out there that are in the entertainment business and, you know, how do you deal with this? And, you know, I don't mind getting super excited about stuff as long as you can manage your disappointment because that's what it's really all about. It's okay to be like, you know, it's like, people, you know, you don't want to be like one of these people that doesn't get thrilled about things. You know what I mean? Because the business is like that. It's like you get an audition in the mail. You do the audition and you get great feedback. And then the feedback is like, well, the producers want you to do this. And you're like, what? And then you get excited about that. And then you're like the, the network and the studio and you get all this excitement and your managers and agents and you have to sign a contract. And you know, having just having excitement about that kind of stuff is totally OK. But just if you get let down, you have to be able to like, ah, oh, damn it. Didn't get that one deal with the the pain, deal with the hurt, deal with the disappointment, and then move on. And then that's what you have to keep doing because that's the only way to survive the entertainment business because it's a lot of no, y'all, a lot of no. It's mostly no, and you sometimes you get a really great yes. So keep that in mind. Next week, I'll be back with um, Real World Advice from a grown-ass man. And uh, thanks again to our sponsor, uh, BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com. And, you know, go get your 10% discount at BetterHelp.com slash Griffin. And thanks again for being here. And I will see you next week.